The Good Master by Kate Sarity. Chapter 13. Christmas. Jancy had his wish. All night it snowed, and for a week afterwards steadily. Drifts reached the windows, covered gates and fences, made the road impassable. Every morning and night the men had to shovel new paths from the house to the outbuildings. Soon the paths were like deep canyons between walls of snow. By the time it stopped snowing, the walls were so high, Jancy completely disappeared between them. With Uncle Sandor and the shepherds to help him, there was very little for Father to do. One morning, he brought in his woodworking tools. We need some new chairs, Mother, he said. Jancy helped him to find well-seasoned, dry maple planks in the woodshed. Uncle Sandor shook his head and smiled. So you still make your own furniture? I don't see how you have the patience for it when you can buy furniture so cheaply now. Father grunted glued and nailed factory rubbish. I want furniture we can use, not rickety stuff like that. Besides, I have nothing else to do now. Shall I twiddle my thumbs and look at the snow? He measured and cut out seats and backs, rungs and legs for future chairs. Uncle Sandor looked on for a while, then he grew restless. Suddenly he exclaimed, I haven't had an honest tool in my hand since I left for the city. Got a spare saw, brother? Father laughed. I knew you couldn't resist it, Sandor. There isn't a man who can resist the song of the saw. Soon Uncle Sandor was working, humming and whistling to himself. Evenings, the shepherds helped too. One by one, the rough pieces were planed and whittled, smoothed and rubbed down. Leisurely, carefully, painstakingly, they worked until each piece fitted each other perfectly. Then they were fastened together with wooden dowels. Father threw himself on the first complete chair with all his weight, built for a lifetime. He, he exclaimed with satisfaction. Mother was teaching Kate to spin. In the fall, a little after harvest time, she had prepared the flax. Kate told her father how it was done. We soaked it first, Daddy. Soaked it in a big tubs for two days. Then dried it in the sun. Later on, Auntie showed me how to break the hard fibers in the flax. She has a machine. It works like a clothes wringer, only you don't roll the flax in it, but work it up and down like scissors. Then we tied the flax in sheaves and combed it out with a wire comb to make it all smooth and even. Here it is, Daddy, on the spinning wheel. See, I can make a nice long thread. She could, too. The thread was made just as thin and even as Mother's. Uncle Sandor looked at Mother. What have you done to the child, my dear? I sent a spoiled, cranky, pale little girl to you, and I find a husky, happy, busy little farmer. She will never fit into city life again. Kate stopped the spinning wheel and sat up in his lap. Daddy, I don't want to go back to the city. Can't we just stay here for good, please? But Kate, your education, my work. Uncle Sandor turned to father who was looking at them gravely. What future would she have here without schools miles away from civilization? Father smiled. You are a school teacher, aren't you, brother? Well, here is Kate, here is Jancy. Here are these young shepherds, eager to learn. The schoolmaster in the village is so old he can't really teach anymore. You could take his place. Wouldn't it be beautiful if you could bring learning and civilization to all these people, your own people? Pista was listening to all this with much interest. Now he spoke. Don't take the little lady away from us, Mr. Nagy. Stay here with us. You're earning money with your work now, I know. Here, you wouldn't be paid in money. You would earn love and peace and happiness. Kate slipped off her father's lap. Her face was shining. She was standing in the middle of the room, straight as an arrow. You remember what you told us, Pista, when I first saw you? I remember every word of it. Listen, Daddy. The sky gives me sunshine and rain. The ground gives me food and water. The sheep give me clothing in my bed. The beautiful flowers and animals show me what to carve with my knife. Can money and schools give me more? That's what he said, Daddy. He gave me this necklace. And you showed me how to write my name, interrupted Pista. That's how Kate's school started, laughed Father. Kate's school? What is that? asked Uncle Sandor. Oh, we never told you about it, brother, did we? Since you have been here, the lesson stopped. The boys didn't want to disturb your visit. Kate has taught Jancy and the shepherds to read and write. Made a good job of it, too, said Father proudly. Uncle Sandor was speechless. He looked up from one to the other. Then he began to walk up and down, deep in thought. They watched him anxiously. Minutes passed. He stopped and looked at Father. I don't know what to do. Give me a week to think it over, Brother Martin. A week? You'll have half the winter to think it over. Mountains of snow don't melt in a week, laughed Father. But that reminds me, Christmas Eve is a week from tonight. Where will we get a Christmas tree? 
This was a puzzle. It was impossible even to attempt to drive to the mountains where the pine trees grew. We'll have to do without one, but it won't feel like Christmas, said Mother sadly. I could make one, proposed Pista. They thought he was joking. How could anyone make a Christmas tree? I'll tell you how. I'll carve out the trunk and branches, and then we can dye some straw green, cut it into small pieces, and glue them onto the branches. Or we could just make paint, or we could just paint paper green and cut it into long, narrow strips with fill, frilled edges, said Kate. And we can trim it with popcorn. I'll make some small cookies and we can tie those on too, said Mother. Everybody had a new idea. I'm so glad we can't get a real tree. This will be much more fun, said Jancy. Next day, Pista had his tree ready. They pasted strips of green paper on the branches and some colored straw too. Kate and Jancy made long strings of popcorn. Mother gave them strawberry juice from her preserves and they dipped part of the corn into that so it had red and white strings. Mother made cookies and she polished small apples. They would go on the tree too. Father fitted the tree into a high stand he carved. Uncle Sandor cut little angels in intricate chains out of colored paper. Everybody had to help make it beautiful. Long candles were cut into short pieces and fastened on the tree with wires. The day before Christmas, Mother and Kate trimmed it. It's more beautiful than any tree I ever saw in the city, cried Uncle Sandor when it was finished. Mother, of course, found time to cook and bake and roast a wonderful supper. Kate set a holiday table with the best pottery, a snow-white tablecloth, blazing candles, and a big bowl of red apples for the centerpiece. All the shepherds were invited for the evening. Darkness fell early. It was Christmas Eve. When everything was ready, Jancy went out to call the shepherds. In a little while they came, led by the oldest of them. He brought a gift. It was a small scene of Bethlehem, all carved of wood. The Christ child in a tiny manger filled with straw. Mary and Joseph, the angels, the shepherds, the three wise men, the oxen, the donkeys were all there. He set it under the tree tenderly and turned around and said, Blessed be the house of our good master and everybody in it. Father shook hands with him. Thank you, and God bless every one of you, my boys. Sit down now, supper is ready. It was a merry meal. Kate's father kept the shepherds spellbound as he described the electric lights, automobiles, telephones, radios, and life in the city. They listened eagerly like children to a fairy tale. After supper, father lighted the candles on the tree. He put out all the others on the table, and then he opened the door wide. Welcome, Christ child, he said. Through the open door, across the silent fields, came the faint but crystal clear voice of the village church bells. Uncle Sandor stepped to the door. Silent night, holy night, he said softly. Kate's clear little voice rose, singing, Silent night, holy night. Then Mother took up the tune, and then all of them were singing it. When the song was ended, they sat around the blazing stove, leaving the door open. Outside, it had stopped snowing, and the sky was glittering with silvery stars. For a little while, everybody was silent. There was utter peace and contentment in the room. Now and then, the plaintive cry of lambs came from the sheep folds, or a cow would moo softly in the barn. Next week, if you can spare some wood, Mr. Naggy, I'd like to make a few feeding racks. We have more sheep this year than ever before, and they're crowded, said Pista. Father nodded. There's plenty of wood in the shed. I'll help you. One of you will have to carve a new bobbin for my weaving frame. Kate and I will start to make linen next week, said Mother. We put in more flax next year, Father. My sheets are wearing out. I'd like to make a nice tablecloth, too, with red hearts and white doves all around the edge, sighed Kate. That pattern takes a very long time, Kate. We only have one frame. We could build another one for the little lady, spoke Pista. I'd like to build one for her, said Uncle Sandor. Remember the one you and I had made for our mother, Martin? Father turned his head slowly and looked at him. That took a long time to make, brother. We worked on it for months and months, maybe a year. Uncle Sandor smiled. I know. Maybe a year, maybe more. Every little piece carved and polished. That's the kind I'll build for Kate. May I help you, Uncle Sandor? asked Jancy. Of course. Jancy and I can have it ready for you, Kate. We can have it ready for next Christmas. Kate, who was curled up in his lap, giggled. Please say that again, Daddy. Say it very loud so we can all hear you. I said, we can have it ready for next. Uncle Sandor stopped and looked at Father, who was laughing too. Yes, yes, Sandor, go on. Kate sighed and snuggled down contently. You don't have to shout, Daddy. We knew it all the time. Knew what, you little imp? That you'll stay home with us. The End